Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this regular to the Conf video, we're going to be discussing Intel. That's right, just for a short time, we're going to be taking a break from Ryzen news. Intel have had an interesting past 24 or so hours in the tech industry, and naturally, they are readying themselves for the Ryzen onslaught. Now, we will later on today be discussing more Ryzen news, more Ryzen benchmarks, and some other bits and pieces, but I do really want to tackle this piece of news because a number of you have messaged me about this and I also want to provide a small update to a piece of news regarding Intel that we covered yesterday. So first things first, let's discuss the update. So basically, there were rumours which originally started over on Semi-Accurate. Essentially, Semi-Accurate said that Intel PR sent out a last minute call us before you write email to most of the press, but not Semi-Accurate late in the after hours last night. And basically certain um, folks were inferring that that could mean Intel were threatening um, members of the press. So in short, they were essentially saying that if you, or they believed Intel were saying that if you don't say that Ryzen is slower or not as good as our products, we will either blacklist you from events or blacklist you for review samples or what have you. But um, as I pointed out, it is very typical. I mean, we get them, and we're not exactly, you know, got 2 billion subscribers or anything. We get them, where if a new product is coming out, or, you know, there's a new launch or a new driver, it's very typical for companies to release an email that says, hey, um, you know, yes, our rival is providing a new uh, product, but hey, look what we've managed to do with our product, and we're also giving price cuts as well. In other words, it's just to remind a reviewer, yeah, okay, this is a new shiny product, but our older lineup is still good, and we've made some price cuts as well. So do kind of at least bear that in mind when you're reviewing the new shiny you know, item, which is fair. And I have absolutely no issue, no qualms, and no quandary with that at all, which I guess kind of didn't make much sense. But anyway, I was rolling with it at that point. So there have been a number of folks on different websites who have started to respond to this. This is on Twitter and everything else. And basically, from what I can gather, feel free to message me on Facebook or what have you, anything differently. But from what I can gather, no one has said Intel are basically threatening them. They are simply saying it is business as usual. And I'm okay with that. Like, you know, business is as business does. It's just very typical of the industry. The more interesting piece of Intel news isn't really to do with allegations in, like, you know, uh, of a threatened manner. It's more to do with product to line up. Now, it's pretty fair to say Intel have been very, 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 very safe with its product lineup over the past couple of years. But it looks like they might be forced to shake things up due to Ryzen. So, a website by the name of bitsandchips.it, which is an Italian website, but they do have an English section of news. I didn't notice this for a couple of days, but a couple of folks have started to message me um, regarding this. And essentially, they are alleging Intel are going to be commercializing a 12-core, 24-thread Skylake processor. Now, just to clarify, this is the Skylake X processor, so it's a bit, you know, it, it's not exactly the regular part for the desktop or anything like that. Now, do remember, your first version of Broadwell E roadmap forecast just an 8-core processor for its flagship CPU. So, Intel eventually started to change its plans and commercialize a 10-core version of Broadwell E. But according to Bits and Chips .it, and they have been pretty accurate before, for example, they did uh, reveal that they um, that the Ryzen CPU would have about on par IPC with Broadwell E, and it seems to be about on par, maybe slightly faster in some uh, certain circumstances. But they have said that Intel could commercialize a 12 core 24 thread Skylake CPU in order to keep peak of the hill. In other words, they're basically doing the same strategy as AMD. They're basically taking the more cores are good approach. And it doesn't always work, because certain tasks, certain applications just don't do so well parallel, quite frankly. But if you do have a task which runs better parallel, then, you know, wide is the way forward. And that's basically what AMD have been saying in a lot of their 
a lot of their discussions, isn't it? They've always said, hey, um, yeah, they've got higher clock frequencies, but we've got more cores. So what I'm assuming Intel are going to do is try to get a marriage of both worlds. For just clarification's sake, don't forget that Coffee Lake is going to be popping up later this year, slash early next year. Now that is going to be bringing six cores, 12 threads to the mainstream desktop. As we all know, the i7, whether you're talking about the 2600K all the way up to like the, you know, the 7700K, has always had four cores, eight threads. And obviously that is not exactly impressive anymore. Like people just want more threads. And obviously there, there are options for that. Like you could once again, rush out and buy like a 5820k back in the day although you wouldn't probably buy it now but you could do or you could have bought like a 6800k or 6900k or whatever but naturally the boards which you know you have to purchase for those it costs more money and um, obviously you've got uh worry about the memory especially with x99 it's not a cheap proposition at all it's not just that the cpus are costly it's also the fact that you've got the additional costs of more expensive motherboards and you know you've got to worry about quad channel and it's just a lot of extra work so amd basically have decided to counter that their their proposition is that you've got more cores more threads but it's cheaper so what it could be, and I'm making a guess here, because by the time that these processes come out, it could be Ryzen Pluses out, and we just don't know what's going to happen in that instance. But it could be that Ryzen is going to be the, I wouldn't say budget, because that is not, that's not fair at all, because Ryzen is very impressive. But it could be more the, you know, the cheaper, better value product, whereas Intel for the, you know, the 8 cores, 10 cores, or 12 cores parts, it could be seen as, like, the, the higher-end, you know, luxury product, which might suit Intel in some ways, but obviously it would also be pretty great for Intel to have a more affordable processor. As, in, as excuse me, AMD themselves pointed out, only, like, 1% of people are happy to spend, like, you know, an exorbitant amount of money on a processor, especially when it's gaming orientated. It's like... If you're doing gaming, I would much rather buy, and obviously this is just an example using today's GPUs, but I would much rather buy like a GTX 1070 or, or a GTX 1080 along with, let's say, a Ryzen 7 1700X rather than, let's say, an RX 480 or a GTX 1060 and, let's say, a, uh, oh, I don't know, like, a higher-end Ryzen, like an 1800X or whatever, I would rather save that money. And Definitely the same thing could be said for, it, for Intel. Anyway, this has been, as I said, a rumoury video and kind of thoughts video, just based upon the information we know, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, I'll see you soon, with any luck. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.